Hello and welcome to One Minute Christmas Design Webinar. My name is Anastasia and it's so nice to see you there. First of all, I want to say Happy Thanksgiving weekend and thank you for joining me today. So um, this is the Christmas webinar and you guys asked me to do something for the Christmas because this is such a busy time. We are fully booked, we have so many clients. I believe that December is one of the busiest months in a year in life of nail technician. So it's always hard to come up with time to do the designs. And when you're fully booked, all of a sudden one of your clients comes to you and she's like, you know what, I decided to do a design today. And you have a next client coming in like 30 minutes and you just don't know what to do. So today I will show you how to do designs that will take you less than one minute and the problem will be solved and we all will be happy. Uh, so we have a special hashtag today, it's hashtag Christmas webinar. Please use this hashtag if you will be publishing anything in your social webs. If you want to spread the word, I would love to see your works, to like them, to comment, maybe give you some feedback. Um, thank you once again for coming and let me know where you're from. I can already see that you joined me from all over the world, Austria, Dubai, Greece, Trinidad and Tobago, Spain, Norway. Wow. Thank you so much for joining. And I also noticed that some of you are here for the first time. So let me run really quick through the webinar rules. First of all, do not forget to take notes and screenshots as we have approximately one hour and it's not much and I need to squeeze an enormous amount of information within this 60 minutes. So take screenshots so you will have everything memorized. Also get your nails or tips ready to work with me. You can buff them right now while you're listening and you can practice with me right now online and actually you can post it in the comments. Um, be active, ask questions. I'm really interested to be, you know, the webinar to be like a conversation, not just some lecture when I'm telling you like what we need to do. Just let's interact with each other. Hello, Tarsha. Hello, Lita. Hello, Felicia. Um, what will we learn today? I will give you some tips about nail art products that you will need and also will show you five easy designs, like I said, that will take you less than one minute excluding cure time, of course. And plus, at the end, we will have ask me anything, so you can ask your questions and I will give my answers. Do not forget, once again, to use the hashtag Christmas webinar if you will be sharing something. And also, I will give you some information about Black Friday sales that we have. Um, but it will all be at the end of our webinar. If this is your first time, let me briefly explain what our project is about. So we are doing professional online classes for nail technicians. We have manicure, we have three levels of nail sculpting, we have need for speed, which will help you to work faster. And recently we added manicure 101, which is the class for beginners. We have electric file manicure, and also we have four mini classes, acrylic sculpting for beginners, bling class, nail art, and pipe shape. And next year we have Nail Art 101 coming up. This is the class for the beginners in Nail Art. And if you don't know me yet, if this is your first time, my name is Anastasia. I have 13 years of experience and 10 years as the nail educator. And my recent photos I wanted to share. So I've been in Stockholm judging an international competition. Maybe you know these people with me on the picture. This is Max Estrada from eNail Couture U USA, Selena Ryden from Sweden and Linda Fried from Denmark. And also just last week I came back from Hong Kong when, where I was judging Cosmoprof competition and my student, which is standing left to me, she won four awards in this competition, including overall score in veterans, which we are very proud of. So the reason I'm telling you that so you just can know me better and understand that my goal is to help you succeed because education and sharing information is really my passion. And you know, I know this feeling when 13 years ago, back then, I was starting and I had many doubts 
I never had some creative education. Nobody taught me how to paint. And I thought, well, I'm just not sure that I can do it. So when somebody just believes in you and give you a simple instructions, like you need this brush, you need this tip, and then you need to do one, two, and three, like give you easy instructions, then it, you realize that it's not as hard. You can actually do it. So my goal is to make you believe in it and actually make you do it. Hello, uh, Joanna. Hi, Kisa. It's really nice to see our students that have been already taking our classes. And hello to the new ones. So let's go right to the nail art. So today we will need different products. I already listed them in the registration page. And for the Christmas, of course, we cannot live without different glitters. If you don't have gel or acrylic glitters, you can simply take any dry glitter and mix it with an acrylic. Now let's start with the design for with acrylic. And if you're a gel person, you can still do this design. You will need to take a glitter gel instead of acrylic. So we will need a glitter powder and a monomer. Okay, <laughs> I found it. Um, also, we will need an acrylic brush. Yes, I am in, in the spot. Okay, we will need acrylic brush. Um, if you have, let's say, only white or clear acrylic powder, you can use dry glitter and mix it with the clear acrylic powder. Just make sure there is not more than 30% of the glitter, otherwise it won't work. Also, we will need a monomer, and as I said, we will need a tip. I'm using the clear tip, I already buffed it, and you can use actually any color of the tip, it just on the clear one, it will work so much better. Okay, now let's start our application. If you're working with a gel, then you need to do uh, to take some builder gel with the glitter and start our application. Oh, hi, Ekaterina. We have the winner of the nail art game here. Hello, Eagle. Hi, Sandra. It's so nice to see you guys here today. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, so I will take a bead just of the medium size and start with the free edge. Place it right here. If you ever worked with the glitter acrylic, you might have noticed that they're working slower than the regular acrylic. And that's why I always recommend to use clear on top. So it will polymerize a little faster. And also you will not have any troubles uh, with a uh, scratchy surface because of the glitter. Oh, and by the way, I got this uh, powder, it's Glam and Glitz by Kiara Sky at Cosmoprof at Hong Kong as well. And I bought it because of your recommendation. You guys told me that this, this is a good one and I need to try it. Then I'm taking another bead and stretching it towards the free edge. And it's really up to you, like how much glitter do you want. Uh, for this design, I think it's better when we have, you know, this solid layer of glitter. So it's shining everywhere. I think that what most clients demand. But if it's something you feel like it's too much, then you can take another glitter with the last sparkles in it. It's all optional. And now we can leave it like that, but I recommend to use a clear powder on top to seal it. So we won't have this scratchy surface and also it will help to speed up the process. So I'm taking Secrets Crystal Clear Powder and sealing it with a really thin layer. Also, it will help us to get the surface smooth because sometimes it's really tricky to do that with the glitter only. And when you have clear, it's a lot easier. Glam and Glitz is my fab. Wow, yeah, I actually like them too. I really like the colors. I mean, I could never come up by myself with adding neon pink and blue together. But yeah, I, I'm also enjoying working with them. And I think for this Christmas and for this new year, I will definitely use them a lot. 
on my client. So I'm taking another bead, stretching it up. And now we need to wait a little. Normally when you're working with the clients, you don't have to wait because you have another 10 nails. So this process is pretty fast and we not actually just did the design, we sculpted the nail and all the design will start after that. Okay, now I clean my brush. Okay, and put away the napkin, put away the monomer and let just this tip dry for a while. Even if your application is almost perfect, I still recommend you to buff the surface and especially the cuticle area because if you don't do that, you will still have this small gap of the product and it may lift later. Hello, friends. Okay, um, so to buff that, I will need a buffer and we we'll still need to wait a little because it's not as warm here. And while we're waiting, I will show you what we will need to do next. So I will use a white gel polish or you can use a bright white gel. It's really up to you. I will apply it on the paper. This is the paper I use for painting, but basically it's the same as paper from the forms. So if you're working on the forms, you can use this paper as well. Also, we will need an eyeshadow applicator, or if you don't have one, you can use a regular sponge. And you know what are the best sponges for the ombre? The sponges, the makeup sponges, like the one you use for your face. And also we will need a small brush. Okay. I think it is, how do you know if it's cured enough so we can file it? You can simply, okay, now we hear the sound here, but here it's not that loud yet. So we still need to wait because if I will start buffing or filing right now, it will feel, you know, like a raisin, it will be too soft. So we need to wait a little until it's completely dry. And let me just show you the final result while we're waiting. So here I used the same color and here I used a different one. And this is kind of the look of the frozen window. And you don't have to do it necessarily this way. You can leave a small amount of window. You can leave few windows or you can do it only from the one side. Okay, now I think, I hope it's dry enough. Actually, it's pretty cold these days in here. That's why it's not drying that fast. And I will slightly buff it. I will not apply too much pressure as I'm just not sure it's completely cured. And by buffing the surface, you're making it completely smooth. And also you will buff away all those extra particles that are on top and we will have a completely smooth surface. Okay, now I will remove the dust. Take the sponge or an eyeshadow applicator and take white gel polish. This is very important to use intense white color. So you need to search what kind of white colors do you have. So first I apply it right here on the free edge. So I'm creating some kind of a frame for the tip. So I'm applying it all over. And then I will take the other side of the applicator, the one that's clean, and simply dab, dab, dab it all around again. So the color will fade and it will actually look frozen. And some people some of my clients at this point used to say, okay, that, that's enough. Can, can we stop now? Because I already like it. And you can, absolutely. Or we can go further and take a small brush and add a small lines like, you know, um, like a frozen pattern on a window or I don't know, maybe it's like frozen needles from the Christmas tree. 
I don't know, but I kind of like this look. You can add them only from the one side or you can add them all over. It's really up to you. Just make them chaotic. You don't have to do them perfectly because it will not look natural anymore. Nothing in the nature is, you know, perfectly symmetrical. And now we will cure it. And basically that's it. Then we will need to seal the design and it's ready love encapsulated glitters. Oh yes, that's how we will call this design because I was like frozen window, how should I call it? Yes, encapsulated glitters, really like them because they do not look as cool when they're, you know, while you're working with them, but once you seal them with a glossy top coat, they begin to shine really well. This is also actually glams and glitz, but it's not as intense. So for the clients who prefer something, you know, nude, not as bright, you can use the different colors. And I also like this look when this window in the center will be half translucent. And that's it. You see, it's really under one minute. Now I will take the top coat and seal it. You can use gel polish top coat or regular gel top coat to seal it. Simply apply one layer and we can already see the result that we have. You see now it's all shiny, it actually looks frozen in the borders. Cure and we're done. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask them and we will go to the next design. And yes, we do have a question. Anastasia, are you protecting customer's skin around nails till you are doing that? That's a very good question. So, um, usually when you use um, the eye shadow applicator, it's pretty small and it's actually possible to work very accurately and do not touch the skin. But sometimes if you use a bigger sponge or there's the special tool uh, maybe you saw it if you're following me on the YouTube. It's like a large sponge on a stick. So when you're using that, yes, then you need to protect the skin and use uh, cuticle defender, the special liquid latex. So sometimes I'm using that, but if you're not working near the cuticle, sometimes it's not necessary. Like with a small applicator, I usually don't use that because it, it takes time and it's still possible to not touch the skin. Okay, and we cured it, and these are all the designs, but you can do multiple different colors, and it will look different every time you try it. Okay, now let's do something different, and I decided to save a little time. That's why I already have this blue background. You can use any other color, but I think blue, light blue, dark blue will look better with this design and also we will need to seal it with a top coat and you can use um, any top coat. It can be the one with a sticky layer or without, it's up to you. And depending what you're working with, if it's natural nails, then it's better to be sock off. If it's gel or acrylic, it's better to use gel top coat. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience and ideas. You're welcome. Um, while I'm sealing that, I will also explain what I will use now. We will need a white acrylic powder and we will also need white gel polish. Uh, for this design, it is better to use gel polish rather than gel. So it doesn't have to be necessarily bright white. You can use like natural white, but still it needs to be intense enough. And also we will need a dotting tool. It is better if you have a few options, like they can be larger, they can be smaller. So for this design, I think we will need something in between, like medium size of the dotting tool. And as we are doing art today, I forgot to wear gloves, but for this design, it is better to wear them. Okay, our top coat is cured. I'm using tech-free top coat, so I don't need to remove anything now. Once again, if you're using the top coat, which is tech-free, you don't need to do anything now. If you're using uh, a top coat with a sticky layer, then you need to remove it now. After that, we will take a white gel polish 
and apply it right on top of our color. And actually it's fine if it will not cover it completely. But what's most important is the layer should be pretty thin. If you will apply it too much, too thick, the result won't be as good. So make sure you're applying it thin and here is the secret. You need to hold your brush really flat, like not with the angle, just flat and do not apply too much pressure, like really light touch. Then I'm taking a white powder and an empty tip and oh my god, it's white on white, but I hope you still will be able to see it. I think this white is a little bit different. It's more bluish. And then without curing, I didn't cure anything yet. I'm showering this tip in a white powder. And it's, well, it's about the same when we are working with the dip systems, right? I think it looks the same. And actually, maybe you can use the dip powder for that. I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. The one I'm using is regular white powder. Then, you can do anything that you want on this tip. Now let's try to do 2018. Okay, so I just made two and now I need to clean the dotting tool with a regular napkin. You can also uh, clean it on yourself, but you need to wear gloves if you don't want to get allergy. Okay, now we do the zero and one. You know, one time I was showing, uh, well, like Christmas, New Year designs and I got the, like the number of the New Year wrong. So yeah, I'm just checking. Hopefully I will do it right this time. And now you see this eight, it's a little bit messed up and feel free to repeat it and fix it. Okay. And if you want um, these lines to be cleaner, then you can repeat it or actually when you do it in the real life if you ever try it you know to draw something on the snow I think it looks more realistic when it's a little bit messed up when you can see a little snow in there and now we will cure it and that's it while it's curing I will show you different options that we can do and it is cannot necessarily be a winter design if you use different colors it can be actually footprints on the sand if you take a dark brown background and a light brown powder so these are another options that i have you can do human footprints you can do some different animals or birds footprints you can do a heart again 2018 so basically you can do anything but i like this white look on the nail it actually looks like a snow i'm not sure if the camera is actually showing you that but it really looks like something on the snow and also you can try something else i know snow angel just any kind of letters and designs and patterns so try it it's really easy i believe everyone can do it and what's great about it is that you have a, enough time to actually do them you don't need to hurry like you do with the same technique when you're working with acrylic and our 2018 is ready and if there are some sharp pieces of the powder you can just carefully buff them off like this then clean it with a brush and we are good to go you can also use an ombre background if you want to have multiple colors underneath okay now let's do something a little bit more advanced. For another design, we will need a white background, which I prepared in advance. And also it is Christmas, so we need to add some bling, of course. I don't think it's possible without it. So I have this mix of the rhinestones. There are different colors and different sizes of them. Also, we will need something silver or gold, gel or gel polish. You can actually use acrylic as well. So I have this Secrets Silver Gel. And okay, I will put the acrylic away now. 
Also, we will need a red. I think red, green, and gold and silver are the colors that you will definitely need a lot during the Christmas. So I will apply a little red on the paper. And also we will need a little brown, dark brown color, and a little black. So for thin lines, my favorite black is Go Color by NSI because of the consistency. It's really thick, but I will not need much. Actually, I took too much here also just to show you. For this design, you will use a tiny amounts of the product. So, I mean, the cost, like self-cost of these designs is pretty low. It's all about the time and the professionalism you're putting into it. And we will need a brush. I'm using this one. It's number two. It's actually for acrylic paints, but I also like to use it for gel. It's natural Kalinsky. It's number two, or you can use number one or one and a half as well. Um, so first we need to create, and this will be a Christmas ball. You probably saw it if you've been watching my live stream. Uh, so first we need to create a ball itself. And it's not as complicated as it may look. So I will first mix this gel a little. As, as the time passes, the colored gels, the pigments can separate from the gel itself. So you just need to mix it so it can work better. Hello, Grease. Okay, now if you're not sure what, where the center is, you can just make a dot and look from a distance to make sure it is actual center. And then we can need to create a circle. And it doesn't have to be like perfectly symmetrical circle and Depending on the size of the nail, it can be bigger or smaller. But it's silver and actually any glitter tones, they're the easiest to work with. So I think that's enough. Yes. Okay, now we will cure it, but we don't need to fully cure it. I will simply freeze cure it in like 10 seconds. And while it is curing, I will clean my brush. Let me show you how I clean it. I simply use the dry napkin to clean it, or the best way to clean it, especially from the dark colors, is to use clean base coat and simply like wash it in a base coat. Just imagine it's a water. It's the same as cleaning acrylic paint brushes in the water. But with the gel brushes, clear, clear base coat is the best thing for cleaning them. Okay, our ball is half cured, and then we will do a bow. I will use red gel polish and make the dot in the center. And for this design, believe it or not, also you don't need to do everything perfectly symmetrical, because in the real life, if you look at the bows, they are not actually like, you know, some geometrical figure. They can be a little folded somewhere so we first we do one side and then we do the other so this design is also optional if you don't want to do this huge bow you can simply draw you know like a thread which is holding the ball it's optional okay and then I will do couple ribbons which are hanging hanging from the top and I know it looks a little weird now because it's all in one color now but then when we will add a couple shades you will see that it's actually all in the right place okay now we also can cure it Well, let's do like 30 seconds. Once again, we don't need to have full cure, but we need to cure a little bit more than 10 seconds because now I will add shades on top of the bow and it needs to be a little cured. 
Oh, hi, Roberta. I had to switch to my laptop so I can comment. Oh my God, it's, it seems like I see now all familiar faces, like we have some community here. I'm really nice to see you guys coming back and back again, that you are so dedicated to the education. I love it. Actually, when I was studying a lot during some period, we also had the same people coming up in the same groups, even though it was in a different cities and it was really nice. Um, Okay, uh, now we actually, for the um, shadows, it is better to use dark red, but I, believe it or not, I have 200 colors, but I don't have dark red that I want. <laughs> That's why we can make it. I have a dark brown, so I will add a little bit of red there, and this is how I will get this color. And I recommend you to do it too. You don't really need to have all colors in the world, but if you know how to mix them, it can help you. And then I will add shades. So first one we will add here. Oh, and also I forgot for another tip. So it is easier to add shades if you will also add to the color a small drop of the top coat. What it will do, it will water the color, so it will be not as intense, it will be a little transparent. And that's actually what we need f to create a nice shades. Oh, hello Santorini. You must have a nice weather out there now. Okay, so I add one shade here another one on the other side and what's great about painting with the gels or gel polishes is even if you made some mistake you can always fix it because it will not dry until you put it in the lamp then i will take add a couple shades here and make this sections of the bow separated and add some here and you see it's like adding a little volume it's actually becoming more alive now but once again if you don't want to do that you can skip this step it will still look nice then we cure and then we can add a little more brown to this mixture and add a darker shadow and shades so it will become actually even more alive and 3D. Are you guys following me? I mean, is anybody doing something I'm doing right now? Are we expecting something, some designs to see from you? Yep, around 20 Celsius, 22. Oh my God, that's, that's so not fair. We have, I think it's in five negative what we have now, but it actually feels a lot colder than that. I don't know why. Maybe because we just came back from Hong Kong when it was the same weather. So I'm uh, doing the same, just adding more shades, but as the color is darker now, it's adding even more volume to it. And I recommend you to always add a little top coat because the colors will become more transparent and it will be easier for you to blend them, to stretch them. And then again, I first cure it, and the last step will be adding accents with the black. Uh, the black, as you probably noticed, you see it has much thicker consistency. It's what people usually call it's like gel paint. And uh, NSI Gold Color is actually, um, it's like a no tack free gel top coat. And I really like the consistency and intensity of the color. And even though it was designed to cover the nail with a black color, I really like it for the designs. It's really easy to create extremely thin lines. Sometimes people are struggling with creating thin lines. And sometimes it's not only about their hands, it's about the product. I mean, if it's too thin, it, it's just really hard to make a thin line. So you, you still can do that, but it's more tricky. So, I also recommend you to use a thicker consistency gel or gel polishes so it will be easier for you, for you to do thin lines. And for the small accents, I will use the smaller brush now. It is number one and I think I didn't clean it 
very good from my previous designs. Okay, now it's cleaned. And the bow is cured. And we can add our last accents. And I have glitter all over my brushes and all over everything. Well, it happens when we're doing Christmas designs. And I will just add a small accents. And it's really up to you, like depending on your style. But I personally, I don't like when, you know, the whole design is outlined. I think it looks, I don't know, like more like a cartoon. And usually when you look at the real objects, also there's no actual black lines. So it is better just to add a couple accents. Like, let's say if you didn't like this ending of the ribbons, you can fix them and make them sharper. But don't outline like the whole piece. Only the accents you want to add. Uh-oh. Okay. And also we can add the actual thing where the, our Christmas bowl is hanging. A small thread and cure it. And now we need to fully cure it because after we will seal it. And this was the longest part of our design because after that we only need to add some decoration and it will be go faster. So we will need the rhinestones. If you don't have rhinestones for some reason, you can actually use different decals. Also, we will need a thick consistency clear builder gel. I will be using Entity One. Also, NSI, they have NSI Apex Builder, which is good for this. So any kind of gel that is so thick that it just stays bumpy in the jar, that kind of thickness we're looking for. And also we will need something to pick up our rhinestones. I will use the wax pencil today, but normally I, I like to use a pickup tool. We do, okay, that's great, because I look forward to seeing your designs as well. And wow, we have more than 60 nail technicians watching us. That's great. I think we, I hope we have fully cured now. And now we need to seal it with a top coat and it is better to use a no cleanse top coat. And I will cover the whole tip from the top to the bottom. And the background for the Christmas bowl can be golden, it can be any glitter color that you like, not necessarily the silver. Okay, now let's start to decorate it. And as I showed you, I have a mix of our different colors and sizes, and we can use them all. I mean, you can use uh, different colors and actually when you have all colors it's really hard to decide so I will take one big one will be blue then one will be red I don't know what I okay let's add the turquoise I mean it looks so much better when you will use different sizes and please don't try to make them you know lay out in a perfect circle perfectly symmetrical it will not look as nice. Okay, I think now we need something lighter probably. No, we already have red. Okay, now white. So I said that we can add any colors and then I end up choosing every single color. I don't know, I just want to make it, you know, more colorful to show you how it really shines when it's all in, in a different colors. And also you don't need to fill the whole surface. It's fine if you will leave some gaps in between because we have silver underneath and it will still look good. And okay, let's add the green one. I just wanted to find this one and finally I found it. Um, and before you cure it, you can move them around if you feel like doing that. And then we cure it. We have a 
gel top coat already, so our design will be shiny and tech free and also we will secure the rhinestones. And if you want to stop at this point, you can. But I will show you something cool just in a moment when we will fully cure it. We will need a thick consistency clear gel, it is important, and also I will use the same natural brush number two. And as you probably know, that usually we don't seal rhinestones. I actually I even told you that on my bling webinar that we are not supposed to cover rhinestones because they won't be as shiny. But for this design, we are looking for a little bit different look, and you will see what will happen in a moment. Okay, and we have first sharing designs, Ekaterina. Oh, very nice. That's. Um, kind of winter design. Did this design recently, the same technique as for winter design 2018 footprints on snow. Very nice, thank you for sharing. That's Actually, we are going to do something similar soon. Okay, it is cured and then the last step is making this ball actually look like a ball. Make sure that your brush is clean because if something will go inside will not be as clear anymore and we need to take a relatively large amount of the gel and carefully cover the surface where we have rhinestones and this clear gel will actually work like a lens so the rhinestone will shine in a different way I mean um, actually if you have aurora uh, rhinestones or you know any kind of chameleon rhinestones that shine in different colors it will also look really good now we need to wait a couple seconds until it sets and cure and this is it then we will need to seal it this part with a top coat and it will be finished so while we're waiting let me show you I have a finished the same finish designed right here so this is how it looks and depending on the size of your client's nails you can make this ball smaller and actually you can even take one, one rhinestone and cover it with a gel and it will also look like a small uh, Christmas ball. Now let me give you some examples of the designs we're not going uh, to do today but just to give you the idea. So um, for example this one those are not rhinestones, there are like flat circles that we have underneath and once you seal them with a the gel, it, they look a little bit alike. And also this is the Christmas tree and here I covered every single circle and you see they also look like beads. If you do the same to the rhinestones, they will also look like a Christmas balls. So now we only need to seal this part with the uh, tag free top coat and design will be ready. So I hope you like this idea and do not forget about the hashtag, do not forget to share it. Okay, are you ready for two more ideas? So this one I think the longest but once again you don't have to make this bow so detailed, you can simply draw some thread on the top and that will be it. Okay, now we will do another design which people usually don't believe me that do not take long. When I show them, it, they're like, oh, this will take me like an hour or something, but it will not. It's actually a lot faster than the Christmas ball we just did. So um, maybe you will help me to come up with a name for it. I don't know, it's like winter trees in the woods. Um, so this design looks better when we have a cat eye gel polish. If you don't have one, it's fine. You can use just any blue or dark purple dark blue background and also maybe you didn't know this but cat eye gel polishes they look different depending on the background and usually the better color they show when you're using the dark one my favorite option is black that's why I will first do the black background you can even try it like if you take like my uh, blue cat eye gel polish if I apply it like it is it's not as intense, you know, it looks like light blue. But when I have a black background, it 
looks completely different. I like it better this way. So uh, one layer is enough just to make like the background dark. Then we will cure it. And I will use, well, let's do the blue, I think, um, Kiatai. And also we will need a magnet. So I recently found this magnet. It's pretty strong and I like that, you know, it's like in the shape of a dot. So you can create not only the line that's, you know, go this going back and forth, but actually the different swirls and lines with it. And it's also important for the magnet to be strong. Oh, it's purple. I think I will... Okay, I think I didn't take the blue. Well, let's actually try this one. I think it will be even better. It's like turquoise, something in between uh, green and blue. Also, it is important to not apply too thick the cat eye, but at the same time, you need to cover the entire surface. Okay, we will put away the magnets. It's too early. So it needs to cover the black completely, so you will not see any black spots. And then, my favorite part, it's time to play. I will carefully put the magnet really close. You see what happens? And we can leave it like this if you like it, but usually it's hard to stop and you want to make more and more lines. I think this one looks a little better. And also you can use another side and you just need to manage how they work. So if you like put it on the other side, it will not um, magnetize the particles, it will do the opposite. So you can move those lines around until you're happy with them. Okay, I think that's enough. We need to stop at some point. So I like when it's black, on, on the middle and we have this little shine on the sides because I will place most of my design in the center. Now we will cure it and while we are curing I will show you what are we going to do next. So for this design we actually need only one color, it's white. But in order to get different shades of white we will make three, no Yes, three types of white. Um, so I will take three drops of the white gel polish. First drop, second, and third. So the first one, I will just leave it like it is. And then I will take a top coat and take a drop and place it right next to the white one and also for this design I will need another white um, we call it gel paste it's like really thick consistency white you see it comes in a tube and um, well maybe you cannot see it then you need to believe me that this white is a little bit different it's like more warm but it's not the case, like it's all about the consistency. You see it's not moving at all, it's like it should be really thick. Okay, and our design is cured, we don't need to remove sticky layer or anything at the moment. And then let's start with a technique you're already familiar. We will take an eyeshadow applicator, dip it in the white and add a little bit to the bottom, then take another side and fade it. It's, it's optional, once again, you can do only one side, you can do only bottom, then I will freeze cure it. I freeze cure it for the reason that, because after that I will be doing the design and if I will leave it like this, the gel polish, as you know, the consistency is relatively thin and it will start moving. I just want to leave it like like this now and then I will take 
You can use a small brush, but I prefer to use brush number two for this one. So we have a drop of top coat. We have a little bit of white. I will take white and mix it with a top coat. And in my mixture, there will be more top coat than white. So my goal is to create the white, which is really transparent. Like have transparent white and uh oh. I didn't clean my brush very well after doing a bow. That's why I will do it now <laughs> because there's a little red in it. And yeah, you see, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to cleaning my brushes. So we'll better do another mixture. Actually, we could add some red, but no, I, I'm not sure it will look good with, with this design. Uh, like I told you, the best way to clean the brush is in a base coat or like we did in a top coat. Um, so the consistency should be pretty wet. Okay, now I have this semi-translucent white and then we will start creating a tree. And believe it or not, but the messier you will make it, the better. So you don't need to draw every single branch, like every single needle. Okay, now I did the first line and I see that the white is pretty intense and it's actually hard to tell when you're doing it on the paper because it's white as well. That's why I will add a little more top coat and mix it. I just need a little watery color, like more transparent. Okay, and then I will simply doing like the shape of the tree. If you will do every single section, like I just told you perfectly well, it will not look natural. And then let's do another one in a distance. You see, it's really taking me not, not much like this and cure. And while it's curing, let me give you some explanation of what we need to do. Um, so usually when people are trying to draw trees, uh, especially Christmas trees, they're doing to, trying to do every line perfectly symmetrical and straight, uh, you know, like, but here you don't have to do it. All you need to do is to stick within the shape and the shape of the Christmas tree, as you know, is triangle. So just imagine a triangle and whatever you do, just you need to stick in this shape. So you're doing some crazy lines, just make sure that the first line is wide, another one should be more narrow and more narrow, etc. So basically you're doing something like this and this stay within the shape. So it's not uh, right and it will not look natural, you know, if you will do it something like this or especially, you know, when people trying to, to do some lines like this, well, it will look like a picture from a children's book. Well, it's fine also, but for this design, when we want to create this kind of natural look, you just need to do, you know, some crazy lines and just stay within the shape. And now we have cured our first layer. I will take back my mixture. And what are we going to do next? I will take more white and add it to the white I mixed before. So I'm just adding more color because I want the next layer to be a little bit more intense. And now uh, the biggest mistake here is to repeat everything you did on the background because you know, you will just simply close it. You need to do some accents, but leave some spaces in between because what we are doing here is basically it's like the snow that is stuck between the branches, right? So it can be like stuck everywhere. <laughs> so just leave, leave some gaps. And this is what makes this design look like it has a volume, like it has a 3D. You can actually add some snow right here as well, and then we will cure it. And here we can only freeze cure it. You don't need to do a complete. And it's also optional. We can do another layer by adding more white, or we can stop at this moment and finish the design. But let's do a little bit more white. 
So now we can add a little more to the mixture. So the color will be even more intense. And it's enough for free skewering. And then I will add and the more white you add, the smaller accents you should do because your trees will be, you know, too bright. And just add some small accents here. And what we can also do, some white on a background. And then with a small brush, create the lines. Now we, okay, I think I need to add some additional parts here mm -hmm. and cure. So I think that will be enough or you can take just white without mixing it with the top and add a smaller accents, but be careful. When you add too many accents, the trees will not look 3D anymore. So you need to actually leave about 50% of what you did on the background visible. So don't make too many accents. And you can use the small brush to make sure you will not create too many of them. So I think I will add just a couple. And actually my last white was pretty intense. It's, it's about the same. Okay, now I will fully cure it because after that we will be sealing our design. And before sealing you want to make sure that your design is fully cured. Otherwise it, it will not work. I will seal it with a no cleanse top coat as usual. And also we can do this design just white and blue. But we know that many clients they really like shine the blink and this is where we can use our glitter so make sure your glitter is really fine i will be using opal shimmer by nsi and we need to wait a little bit if you have any questions feel free to ask them and i think it is time to seal it i will seal it with the top coat with the one layer and cure it again. You can add any objects like you like you. Um, remember Ekaterina recently showed us her design. So there was a house and other kind of trees. You can also add a half moon or whatever you feel like adding there. You see, you can also add some fade on the top, on the other side, you can make only one or two trees. You can make a half of the tree so it's visible. It's really up to you. And also this was just an option. If it's easier for you to work with a small brush, you can do it as well. In this case, usually trees look more detailed, but make sure you mix it with a top coat. And after curing, we will add small accents on the top. And there are two options to do this. We can use this thick consistency white. This has to be a tech free gel paint, otherwise it will be sticky. Or you can use a tech free top coat. If you will use top coat, you will not add any color, but we will see um, more glitter. And if your goal is just to add more white as well, then you can use the white gel paint and actually we can <laughs> decorate it with the snow. Okay, let me show you the option with the white. So this is the tech free gel paint. So we basically can't paint anything with it right on top. And I am adding small accents and this white will look different anyways because it goes on top. I think you can already see that. And the more glitter you want on your tree, the more accents you can do. You can also add them right here on the bottom, on another tree. 
and you can also use different colors of glitters. You can add rhinestones and whatever you want now. And also, you can leave it like this, cure, and this will be finished design. But if you want it to shine, then I will take a tip and without curing, right here on top, I will apply the glitter. And it will stick only to the parts where we have the uncured gel. Be careful, do not move it, as it's not cured yet. Then I will remove the excess and cure it in the lamp. When did you add the glitter? Oh, uh, Susan, I think this was the question about what we did right now. So this is the moment I added glitter. If you want the snow on top, this is the decoration. Let me show you how it looks like. It's, um, I don't know, we call it just snow. Um, it's, it's not really glitter, it's some particles that looks like snow. Um, you can mix them with a top coat or the best way to apply them is to apply top coat and before curing you can take a brush which looks like this and simply add a little snow on top and it will look something like this like the snow is on top or you can use the snow instead of glitter and apply it right on the Christmas tree so it will look more snowy <laughs> rather than glittery okay now we need to completely cure it otherwise we won't be able to clean it properly and I believe it's already like that okay now we clean it and you see the glitter stays only on the parts where my white was. So this was the design of the trees in the woods. As you see, it's really easy and it's really fast. It didn't take me long and depending on the amount of layers you want to do, it may be faster or longer. But trust me, like this is one of the easiest designs today. Like I think, I don't know, making straight lines from the footprints is a even a little bit more complicated rather than this one okay now let's do the last one but not least um, so these were natural style christmas uh, well maybe not christmas just trees and now let's do the following so maybe you already knew maybe you didn't as these cats they're not and painted. This is something you really need when you don't have time, when your client's in the rush, but you need to do something cool. We can use stickers or wraps. So I have the stickers with the cats because I like cats. Yeah, you can tell it by my shirt. Uh, but these cats, they're not really winter cats. Yeah, they're just random cats. And you can make any design on the wrap look more stylish, more like you did by yourself and more Christmas if you add some Christmas decorations like making a Christmas hat so which one do you think we should take let's maybe do this the grumpy cat and for this one we will also need the white background and if you are um, I know one of the best the one that I like are NCLA wraps I think this is one of the best manufacturers the, the one I'm using now it's some Russian wraps, but I think you can find them in any nail art supply store. So I will apply the white and the, uh, let me guys know if you ever worked with the wraps. I really like them because the difference from the stickers is that stickers, they are like paper. They just stay like this and you need to cut the corners. You need to somehow make them take this shape. And uh, the sticker is flat and the surface of the nail, it's curved. And with the wraps, we can use the heat to actually melt them a little bit so they will take the shape of the curve that we need. Um, so that's why you will need a heater. I have the special heater for the um, wraps right here. This is the same one you are using for the IBX if somebody is working with it. Here, if you're not, then it can be a regular blow dryer or something with a 
kid. Um, I love the kid, it's nice. We have another cat lovers here. Or it can be dog, it can be actually anything. While it's curing, let me show you. You can use any kind of wraps. I have some uh, winter style uh, wraps here. And you can take, let's say, this one and add white accents on the snow, add glitter, and it will already look a little bit different. Not like you took some sticker and, you know, sticked it. Um, Okay, now it is cured. We don't need to remove a sticky layer or anything. Now it's very important, do not touch uh, the underneath the wrap. We need to use orange wood stick. And also you need to look for the right size of the nail. So usually if you're using the same brand of the wraps, what I recommend to do is to cut this part off because you don't really just don't need it. And this is how you can measure it depending on the nail. It's about the same as measuring the tips. So you need to fold it and make sure it is not more narrow rather than nail. But today we have tips, so it will be a little easier. Okay, so to separate it, I will use the orange wood stick and carefully separate it. And actually, even if you don't stick it from the first attempt straight, it's fine. You can fix it as many times as you want. Now our goal is to try to make it stick to the center. You see it's already once to stick. The, here you can hold it with your finger and carefully remove. Now I recommend you to not do anything yet and just to make sure that it's completely in the center. And then with a stick move back and forth from the center to make sure it is centered. And now I will place it in a heating machine. Let me show you the side view like this part is not sticked yet. This one is not. And we could just take and stick it, but then we will have some folds. So I will heat it for about two minutes, so it will be warmer and it will take the curve of our tip. Okay, I'm setting it to the heat. Okay, I will hold it just to make sure it will not fall anywhere. And now I can read, I have water decals. Roberta, yes, you can use water decals as well. I will be showing you after that what how we can decorate them, it's all the same. Where we can buy this please? Debbie, you need to look to, for NCLA, like it's nail, nail something, Los Angeles probably. So uh, just Google NCLA wraps, I believe they have distributors in many countries, like we have one. And if you don't find them, just you know Google nail wraps, I believe other manufacturers also use them. So it depends on the heater, but I usually do one to two minutes. This is the time that the wraps really start to heat up a little and then they can take the shape. So now let's wait for a little while. And they actually work without heat as well. But like I told you, when you heat them, they are more flexible and it's just easier to work with them. And also it's a great solution for the natural nails because they, they work on them as well. Okay, I hope it's enough. We have our cat back and then I will move back and forth from the center to stick it to the one side and then do the same to the other. And here you have to be pretty quick until it um, cools down again. And actually, if it's too cold in the room, you need to be really fast. Okay, we have a couple folds here. So I will, if you have them, then you can repeat the heating process for like a few seconds, heat it up again, and then roll it again. Same time with the hair dryer, um, Susan, well, yeah, basically that's what it is. There's just heat, heated air. So yeah, hair dryer will work as well. Maybe it will not look as professional, but I think if it's, I know they have like small ones. Yes. 
It's about the same. Oh, okay. I, I turned the cold air. <laughs> now I will switch to the heat. Or you can actually use your breath, but once again, with a client, it will not look as professional. So yeah, I believe you need to find something that's heating them up. Oh, well, okay, hope it will be enough. And, oh no, it's already separated. And yes, then I will roll all these wraps. So I'm working with the orange wood stick just to make sure it's completely stick. And we don't need to use any base coat underneath. It sticks great just to the sticky surface of the gel polish or the gel. Okay, now to file the free edge, I will use the file, but only in this direction. Do not file back and forth or left, right will ruin the background only like this even even though it looks weird from the top to the bottom and here we have this extra tissue okay well we could leave it like this but we want christmas right so we can add some snow but let's do the christmas hat for this grumpy cat so we will need red and also to make this hat look fluffy I will need this uh, thick consistency white I showed you recently in a previous design which will go on top and also the white gel polish and to make this hat look fluffy, also we will need a flocking powder. Which many years ago when I didn't have it, I made it by myself. I, I took some hair from, from the real cat. But it, it was not injured, don't worry. It was naturally falling off from, from her. Um, so now I will take, I think for the hat this brush number two will work. And usually um, when people are doing the Christmas hats, the beginner's mistake is, you know, they're doing it too much like a triangle. So um, So here, oh, okay, let me show you like this, it will be too close. So here we have a triangle and uh, usually when it's folded like the upper part, then it looks not really like a triangle, but like, like a pyramid, right? Like a triangle without the top and this part will go somewhere on the side. Um, well, unless you want to do some some crazy design with the cat. I think it, it will work. Any, you know, there's no rules in the nail art. I think I, I've been telling you this for a while because anything you want to do will work. So I think we will leave one ear and we will need to close another one, maybe partially. So this cat is, you know, it's pretty straight. I mean the front view, so it will not be too complicated. This one, and then it goes to the side. Well, uh, we can pretend that this hat has some holes for his ears, or we can use white and, you know, just simply close the ear. We can try to do that. Okay, now I will cure it and add another layer so it will close um, the picture which is underneath. It is better to use intense colors for this kind of design so you will not need to repeat them uh, and to make sure they will completely cover what's underneath. And actually for these cats uh, on this design, I also, they had something on the background, they had uh, ears or different crazy hats, so you, for example this one, it had some um, horns like a deer, <laughs> that's why I added some snow so it will close it, 
and it will not look weird like why there are horns on underneath the the hat um, okay I think it is fixed now and let's just repeat the same add more red here and well just let's try it I think my white is intense enough I just need to clean my brush really well and you know you can uh, yeah we can close this ear with the white and then we can also add some snow or something else so you will not be able to see it and cure so the idea is you can use water decals wrap stickers and add some of your own accent details and i believe it makes this design look different it does not make it look cheap anymore like you know you just took a sticker and stick it right on and you can combine it with the glitters with the rhinestones and once you add something it gets a completely different look so i encourage you to try these designs with any stickers that you have like i just showed you like these cats in the different decorations they had nothing to do with christmas or winter but now when we added those they look pretty much like a christmas cats Okay, I will add a little more here to close it. And a little bit more red, free skewer it. And uh, when you're happy with the hats, then you can do this white part, you can do it on top. Or you can do a little bit underneath and then do this fluffy part on top. So it's also optional, but as our goal is to make the designs fast, then I will show you how to do it in the last steps. Okay, we need to fully cure the background because we have red there and some colors like intense red, dark red, brown. If you will not fully cure them, sometimes when you apply the top coat, the color can be smudged. Not even the color, but the sticky layer has too much pigment in it. So to avoid that, we need to fully cure it. And then we will seal it with the top coat. So you see when I'm sealing it, it's completely um, flat. We don't have any decorations here yet. And uh, to uh, seal uh, the wraps, it is better to use uh, two coats of the top coat. Okay, and if you want to add some snow, you can do it now. I think I want to add just a little bit on top. Uh oh. Yeah, because, you know, just somehow to explain the expression on this cat's face. And then we will cure it. And now we only need to add those white fluffy parts. Do you place water decals on sticky layer as well? Yes, Roberta. Well, it depends. Actually, some water decals, they're pretty um, thin. The clear ones, in this case, I remove the sticky layer uh, because, um, like... Also, they're a little bit wet from the water, so sometimes it's easier to move them around when there's no sticky layer. But yes, if I like want to place it at exact point and I know where, yes, it's fine to leave the sticky layer, but it's optional. Uh, they will last both with and without. I tried it because they're so thin. Just make sure there's no uh, water stickers on the edges, because if there are, you need to seal it really well. All right, we have some designs, 2018. Felicia, oh, oh my God, I was now looking at this picture, believe it or not, I felt like I did it. Like, even the, your hand looks so, so much similar and the, uh, the color of the nails is mine. I was like, really for a second, I was like, is, is that my picture? Great. Um, okay, so we cured the top coat, yes. And now let's take our white 
and make this hat look like it's a Christmas one. So it needs to go a little wider than the red. And it, it's okay for a hat if it's closing even the part of the, um, of the eye. Actually, if you look at the real pictures of the hats, that's what they look like. And then we will add some pom-pom here, even though we cannot see it very well because it's on a white background. And you don't need to make them fluffy so you can just leave it. I think it already looks like a Christmas cat. But uh, then we will clean the brush so it's completely clean and pointed. And then do the following. Like with a very light touch, I will simply stretch some parts to make this fluffiness show up and do this in a different directions you see this fur it can never be you know it, it's not like a grass it, it does not look on the one direction so it should be a little messy and crazy that's what it makes it look like it's fluffy part of the hat and like i told you it's fine if it goes a little bit on the eye it's fine it happens in the real life then we add some fluffiness here and the last step is adding the flocking powder. So the flocking powder, uh, these particles, they're so small, like you don't need to breathe when you're working with them. Like it's not even like a glitter. It's so, I don't know, soft and small. So I recommend you to hold this. Re See, I've even talking and it's like moving. And you need to apply it enough to make sure it sticks there. And now we can carefully remove it and cure. And all the flux will stay right there. Yes, yes, I agree with you guys. These designs by Felicia truly look great. What did you use for the snow on the fluffy brush? So yes, I think that was the question. I just did what answers your question. So this is the flocking powder. Um, I saw those, I even left the link on some of my YouTube videos, so you can find it on Amazon. Just simply search for flocking powders. They have the sets, I think there's like 10 or 12 different colors. So yeah, the, and I believe many nail art suppliers have them as well. And you already know how to add the snow, you can add it on top, you can add it all around or whatever you want. You can add glitter. If somebody wants a fancy glittery cat, you can do it as well. And also, oh, I have, yeah, I have this another example. So you see, this is like a winter design and I just added some white accents with the glitter. And now it, it kind of looks like I hand painted. <laughs> and okay, our grumpy cat is almost ready. Now we clean the axis and I, I really like how it feels. I maybe on the on the camera it's not as fluffy, but for real it is. So our design with the cat is ready, and please do not forget to share if you try it. And we have a questions. Will it will be available for replay? Yes, Tarsha, we will leave it for a couple of days, but then we will edit it, and well, it will be available after a while at our website for sure. Um, so let me give you now some information I promised at the beginning um, about the NSI Academy. So we just had a Black Friday sale, maybe you know it if you're following our updates. And you guys asked me if we could extend it for a while. And okay, how could we resist? We are adding another couple of days. So all offers from Black Friday are available now until December. Too. And if you have no idea what our classes are, I will briefly tell you right now. So we have pre-recorded HD quality videos, which you can view anytime, anywhere, from any device. This is how it looks like. You can see it on the screen. Then you will receive a feedback from me. And I believe this is the most valuable part from 
each class because when you're learning when you're um, you know watching videos and when you're trying it's good but when somebody actually sees your main mistakes and show you how you can do better how you can improve this is the most valuable part from the class at the end you will receive a certificate and these classes will start on December 1st which is pretty soon so if you wanted to learn manicure and nail sculpting you can use this deal and today I'm opening the last specials which are for mini classes they will be only $19 instead of 30 and you can use all these deals today up to December 2 so you can see some of my students work on the screen now we have many many of them it's not possible to share them all anymore and what's special about the classes like i told you that you can study anywhere and anytime and the amount of the attempts to redo any design any set is not limited because our goal is to for you to succeed not just you know to give you um, some knowledge and videos here go watch them and do whatever you want with them no we actually want you to learn to show how you're improving and at the end to give you some improvement as a certificate um, so for these offers we have up to 50 percent off from our nail sculpting levels need for speed electric file manicure well basically we have all our classes for the special prices and you can learn it right under this video you can review them learn more about the classes and these offers will be valid until december too and some freeze options are also available let's say if you will be traveling or out of the town you will not be able to learn for a while we can freeze them and thank you so much for watching and we have couple minutes for your questions and answers and if you have one and okay we have made this that's awesome I, I love your woods with the trees you actually got, get my idea can I see it a little closer again um, because yeah they're really great what I can only recommend add a little more top coat to the white so they will be more watery and they will look more 3d and the frozen vinyl is also a good one Good job. I think you have the similar acrylic powder as I had. So if you guys didn't have a chance to share it right now, do not feel sad. Just use the hashtag. You already know which one. Christmas webinar. The hashtag Christmas webinar. It's on the screen now. And I will see your works later. And I would love to like them, give you comments and feedback. Thank you so much for watching. If you feel like staying with us and learning more, do not forget to follow us. We have Instagram, NSI Academy. We are on Facebook. We are here. And of course, subscribe to our newsletters. We have many different updates. And do not forget about Black Friday sale. This is really like a one, the best in the whole year deal. We never had the deals better. And this is the only offer. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you later. Bye.